Java includes classes to work both with stacks and queues. So let's look at uh, programming with queues. The basic operations on queues are adding a value at the back of the queue and removing a value from the front. We can also peek at the front value without actually removing it. And we can ask the queue for its size and whether or not it contains any elements. Now, building a queue is not as straightforward as building a stack. So here's the code for creating a new queue. Notice that we are creating a variable of type queue, but the object that the variable references is of type linked list. This is because queue is an interface and not an object type like we've been working with. We'll talk more about this soon, so for now, just you can copy this line and, uh, and work with it. Notice that the type parameter is integer on both sides. So let me use this in a program. So here I have a class that just has a main method in it, and I'm going to start by uh, building a new queue. So I start with queue, -U -U -E. I'm on a queue of integer, and I'll call it queue, and that's going to be a new linked list of integer. So again, notice that the two types here don't match. We'll talk more about this soon. So for now, just, just do it. Um, both queue and linked list are in java.util, so we can import everything from that package. Um, java.util.star. So now I have a new queue. So I can add things to my queue. And here I'll add 42, just to be creative. I'll add 23 and the number 5. And so now I have a queue. The front of my queue is the first element I added, this 42. And the back of my queue is the last element I added, this 5. Um, just like stacks, queues have a two-string method, so I can print my queue here and see what's inside. So sure enough, I get a nice representation of the queue. 42, again, is going to be uh, the front of my queue, and 5 is going to be the back. So now if I want to print, if I want to access an element from the queue, I can remove it. And um, when I call remove, I get the first element that was added, or 42. So that's the front of my queue. Now, we talked about stack traversals. Let's talk about traversing a queue. Again, since queues don't assign indexes to their elements, we can't use for loops like we did with arrays or array lists. We can use the same trick that we used with stacks and remove elements and keep iterating as we still have elements. So we can use a while loop, and same as with a stack, we can say while our queue is not empty, while our queue is not empty, we can take an element out and do something with it. So the traversal will have a queue.remove in it, which is getting us closer and closer to an empty queue. If I run this code now, I get all the elements in my queue, and notice that they are in the same order that they were when I put them in. So 42 is the first element I put in, it's also the first element I took out. 23 second element, second element I took out. So that's what a, a queue traversal looks like. Just like with a stack, I'm destroying the queue as I go, I'm taking out all the elements. So I could do the same thing I did with a stack and store them temporarily. Another option is that I actually can use a for loop with a queue and re queue elements I've already looked at in the back of the queue. Let's take a look at what our queue traversal with a for loop might look at with our current queue. So I have a 42 at the front, 23 in the middle, and 5 in the back. So if I were using a for loop, I'd probably want it to run three times, that's size times, and you know, in our while loop traversal, we removed each element. Now what I can do is I can add it again to the back. Okay, so I couldn't do this with my while loop because my queue is not emptying, but if I'm using a for loop and only doing this three times, I can remove the front element and add it
add it to the back. So I've done this once now. So the 42 is at the back, the 23 is now at the front. So let's do this two more times. So I remove from the front, add again to the back, remove from the front, add again to the back. So I've done this size times, three times. My cue is in the same order that it was when I started, and I've examined each of the elements. So this is how I can do a for loop traversal of a queue. Let's take a look at what the code would look like for that. So I'll uh, leave my while loop traversal at the end since it destroys the contents of the queue, and I'll try a for loop traversal first. Let's have it repeat size times. So I'm going to start at zero and go until q.size. That's another one of the queue methods. And now I can say every time you go around the queue, let me remove an element and then I want to re enqueue it at the back. So that means we probably need to save this in a temporary variable. So I can just say q element equals, I'm sorry, int element is whatever I'm removing from the front of my queue. Then I can do what I need to do with that element and I can re enqueue it. So q dot add element. So I'm adding that to the back of my queue. Let's see what it does. And I'm just going to add a println here so we separate our two traversals. Hopefully they'll do the same thing. So our first traversal here using the for loop, we've got 42, 23, 5. And then here's our while loop traversal. They do the same thing. Great. I want to add a twist here. So usually if we're doing a traversal, we're not just going to print the elements. We want to do something with them. So Let's change our first for loop traversal to remove elements that are less than 30. So we only want to keep elements greater than or equal to 30. In this case, only the 42 will stay and the others should be removed. So let's see what we would do here. Uh, we have to take an element out of the queue to look at it. And then I think we need a conditional. So we can say if the element and this code here is code that we want to run if it's an element we want to keep. So anything that is greater than or equal to 30, we want to display the element and re enqueue it, keep it in the queue. So I think that means if element is greater than or equal to 30, we can display the element and add it back to the queue. All right, so let's see this. We should only see the 42, both from the first traversal and the second one, because this should be out of the queue. Now, that's not what happened. Looks like our code worked for the first one, so we displayed what we wanted, but that five didn't get removed. It's still in the queue when we do our second traversal. What happened? Let's take a look. Let's run through the code. So we said run this code size times. Now we're removing elements, so let's keep track of size here. Initially our size is three. And so the first thing we need to do is remove an element and see if it's gr uh, greater than 30. In this case, yes it is. So we print it and we re enqueue it. Great. Now we look at the next element. We're at one, one is less than three in our for loop. Uh, we take out 23, we say, is this greater than or equal to 30? No, it's not. So we don't print it and don't re enqueue it. Now our size is at 2. Now we do our for loop increment, and i is now 2. Is 2 less than 2? Of course not. So our loop stops. So we don't print out the 5, we never even reach the 5. But when we do our next traversal, it's still in there to be printed. So we didn't want our loop to depend on the changing size. What we wanted was to actually run our loop over every single element. We wanted it to run three times, no matter what. So in this case, the fix is fairly straightforward. We can store the initial size and use that as our loop bound. So here's what this looks like. I can say in size equal q dot size. So that'll capture the initial size. And now I can use that as my upper loop bound. So now, no matter what, my loop is going to run three times. It's going to look at every single element. So 
so it properly removes any element that's less than 30. In general, if we're going to do a traversal and we're going to be changing the size of our list, we still want to make sure we look at every single element, so we want to store the initial size.